Hello and welcome to this BB Education cutting tutorial. Today's tutorial is a version of the very commercial haircut called the shag. In this particular haircut we're looking at how we can go from a very short fringe into maintaining length without thinning the length out. For the purposes of this tutorial we've styled it in a more 70s feel with a more volumized interchangeable look. To begin cutting in to maintain balance, split the section down the middle of the profile. We're going to be holding our fingers at a very, very slight angle to mirror the eye socket. We're going to be cutting a short to long line, so not necessarily trying to cut parallel to your fingers. This is giving us a lovely soft curved line. We're going to repeat this on both sides, but you'll notice that the elevation is on a finger's depth. Working on a finger's depth elevation is ensuring that we, can, we do create quite a strong line. This, of course, is our guideline. So this, this particular point, we don't want to be having too much elevation. When we take the next section down, we work in the same way by halving the section. But you'll notice the difference immediately. Look at the elevation now. We are now lifting the elevation much higher, and we've chosen a distribution of point cutting. Why do you think we're using the point cutting here. Why do you think we're lifting with the elevation? Well, bear in mind that by lifting the section, by using elevation, we're going to create a softer line. And then by point cutting, we're just going to add to that softness. Now, working from the top of your fringe section, not going any further back, take four diagonal sections as to face frame. And this is where we're going to begin to connect in into the base. We'll repeat this on both sides. Take, take real consideration of the level of density within your client's hair, as this will influence and dictate the levels of elevation we use, as elevation is going to control how much weight we remove or how much weight we keep. So once we've got both these sections in and balanced, we can discuss how we cut the sections that connect into the length. So the elevation is key. If we lift the hair up, we affect the length less. If the section is pulled down and we slice, we affect the length more. So we're going to lift this section up to ensure that we don't cut the length at all. Remember, so if, this, if the elevation is high, we're going to have less effect on the outline. If it is lower, we'll have more effect. That's the golden rule. So let's go through it again. You can see I pull the section, a lot of tension in my fingers to hold the hair and aid the cut. And as I'm slicing, I'm going almost out of screen. I'm not slicing down. So the slice is going at an angle. Here you'll see a lot of tension again, but I'm stood in front of my mannequin this time. And you'll see the section is being pulled across, not really being pulled down at all. I'm going to have one little check through, just to make sure everything's connected, and we're ready. We're going to take our next section, running from the top to just behind the ear. So whilst we're pulling the top straight out, our next sections will be lifted and we'll be over directing the cut line similar to the front to ensure that whilst the elevation is high, our cut line is still being over directed to maintain the weight and length of our outline. As the section gets bigger, we need to remove part of the previous sections. 
to ensure we have a consistency in our guideline. You'll see here the elevation is much higher each time. We're still getting longer because each section is going on to the previous section. What you'll see here is instead of point cutting, I'm slicing, which helps me to achieve a much more steeper gradient than just point cutting. So as I go through here, you'll see we're angling the scissors almost immediately to help to reduce the amount of hair that's taken off. You'll also notice that I'm stood from behind for one side and up front from another. This ensures consistency of the angle from which we're starting the haircut. We cross check the haircut vertically off the profile and ensure we have neatness and consistency and balance within what we've already cut. Line. We're going to be pulling the section straight out from the head. So we take a small amount of hair, pulling the section straight up, as we're going to be maintaining a vertically round shape. Our vertically round shape will only, only exist as we are working above the round. As our section goes slightly below the round, when we get to that point, our section will become elongated due to the head shape. This will give us a slight short to long, which will also help to blend in. So as we're pulling out parallel to the head shape, parallel to the head shape, when we get to the bottom, you'll notice that we start to build length due to the nature of the head shape. This also helps connectivity and softness and our disconnection. Notice that we are again point cutting all the lengths here to create softness and to ensure fluidity and consistency in all of our cutting. Once complete, double check your first section, ensuring you are in fact happy with it, and make an assessment on how the hair falls to see if we are in fact complete as this will act as our guideline. So as we pull the section out and watch it fall, you'll notice it is falling short to long which builds no length or weight, which really aids with connecting and disconnection. We're gonna start with that with our left hand side. We're gonna take a pivoting section to release section two. Once complete, we're going to cross check, which is checking all the sections we just cut at once. So we're going to take a horizontal section, working through the hair. We pull the hair in the same elevation we have done throughout. So we don't pull it to a different elevation to what you've cut it, pull it to exactly the same as we cut it vertical to check. Once complete, we're going to retake section one, clip out the previous side we've just cut, working a pivoting section, to get ourselves section two. Our section two is gonna be over-directed back onto the previous in the same way. You notice my body position hasn't changed, I'm still stood on the same side. So one side I was pushing onto previous and the next side I'm pulling onto previous. This just ensures that we're always cutting from the same part. Here we've started cutting from the top to the bottom. If I switched, I'd be cutting from the bottom to the top, which is an inconsistency which is one of the ways we can get our section to have no balance. Once complete, I'm gonna clip all the hair out of the way, remove the underneath, groom all the roots, and then connect all the sections together. Once I've visually checked the hair cut, I'm then gonna to begin to blow dry. We're just gonna blow dry very simply with a wrapping, a wrapping motion, which is helping us to control the root area. I'm using a nine row vest as it glides through the hair really easily, aiding me to get all the roots dry and get control. We're then going to switch to a large ceramic brush and start to manipulate the root areas to give volume. And we're going to dry the hair away from the face to manipulate the hair into a bend and a flick.
When it comes to slicing, the more towards the ends we slice, the more weight we remove. The lower we go towards the base, the more density we remove. Density will appear internally, where weight is externally. We want the weight on the outline to still give us plenty of definition, so don't go crazy with removing the weight. And remember, use the mirror to assess how your shape is forming. Once complete, we'll have this shape. Beautiful, soft, interchangeable shag shape. This completes today's tutorial. We really hope you've enjoyed it. We really hope this is going to benefit you and your clients. Thank you so much for watching and we hope to see you again soon.